everyone. Danke schön. So I walked on stage and poured my water all over myself. My father used to say, you gotta take me everywhere twice, second time to apologize. So, sorry, sorry, I'm sorry. Have you had a great time this weekend? The games? Yes, we have, we've had a great time. It's been such a pleasure to see everybody. You guys are amazing. You guys having fun? Yeah. The first convention back, yes? Excellent. David uh, couldn't hear what I said, so no. that's right. <laughs> it's okay. So let me ask, are you guys having fun? <laughs> What's that? It said shiny. It's Shut a up. reference to another show. Oh, no. Yes. Guys, come on. Oh, no, none of that. None of that. Yeah. Anytime, I, anytime Firefly gets mentioned on a Star Wars battle, oh, one of you goes, oh, God. Yeah, it's Firefly Lane. It's on Netflix. No, 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 no. <laughs> I love Firefly. I love Firefly. Let's get to questions before we get in trouble. Shall we? Let's have some questions. Hello, how are you? Hello. Fine. And you? Very good. <laughs> uh, it's great to see you all here. Uh, my question is about Atlantis and for all of you. Um, if you can go back and choose another uh, role uh, uh, from you and uh, between you, and uh, how, was, uh, uh, how would it look like? I would take Jason Momoa's role, so I wouldn't have to say any words. I could just learn what and be done instead of paragraphs and paragraphs at the same talk. That's who I play. That's a good Jason point. Moore. That's a good. That's, that's I, a good yeah. answer. I would take Rachel Luttrell's role as Taylor, so I wouldn't have to say any words. Oh, <laughs> Oh, gosh. I thought you were going to say so that you could wear all the crop tops. Well, I have done pretty that. Pretty cute, that the crop tops. Yeah, that's, that's the, the real, yeah. You just want the costume. That takes me into uh, mind of my little story. No! About uh, Rachel, when she was having, I, I mentioned I'd tell the story on the stage, when Rachel was having her baby, Caden, yes. who's now here and is tall watching. as I am. He's watching, so yeah, be he's, careful. Yeah, he's, he's a great little kid. Um, he's 14 now? He's 14, yes. Wow. So Rachel was gonna have the baby soon, and on the set, all the girls in the makeup trailer and hair trailer, they made a beautiful book for Rachel, and and everyone wrote little special messages to her, saying you're gonna be such a great mom and and good luck. It was luck very and touching, very beautiful. And then then they all wanted the cast to do something, and I couldn't think of anything. And she goes, the Leah said to me, Paul, you got to do something. And I came up with something. Rachel left early one day, and when she left, she had a stunt double. What's her name? Oh, she's lovely. Lonnie, Lonnie. Lonnie. And she's about Rachel's size, um, because her stunt double. So when Rachel left, I took all, I got the stunt double's costume, and including a pregnant belly, and a wig, and I had the makeup artist try to make me look like Taylor, a little bit. Yeah, it was perfect. It was almost, I, It was almost identical. Yeah, uncanny. And then, and then I asked uh, Jason Momoa to help me out, and I got her fighting sticks, and Jason and I did a scene, a photo shoot in the parking lot with me fighting, and then I went into Rachel's trailer, and I poured bags of chips all over me, and I laid on her bed and put my hands up, and I said things like, Mommy's drunk, Mommy's sexy, and I had Jason holding me, like, Mommy's sexy, Mommy's tough, and different pictures of me fighting with Jason, all these shots, and then we took those and put it in the very back of her book, and then, the next day when she came in, they presented her the book, and I made sure I came at the same time, and I was sort of down where Tori is, and she was over here, and she's quite emotional at the time, yeah, and she's yeah. crying with every message lovely. she gets. It was very, very, yeah. It was beautiful. It was beautiful. She was so happy with all the messages she was getting, and then I'm like sitting, waiting for it, waiting for it, and then when she got to the page, my page, with Jason, she turned the page, and she's like, oh my God, <laughs> you know? And it was the best reaction. I'm like, yes. And she still has those pictures. I do. I still have those pictures. I leaked some of those pictures recently yes, on she, Twitter. So she Paul actually watched yeah. Rachel. Yes. So I much. actually so, did play Rachel Latrell to answer your question. I played Taylor. They're pretty. They're they're pretty creepy photos. If I'm being totally honest. Yeah, so it's, they, they are. It's something you just can't unsee once you <laughs> see it. I like to think they're this pretty sexy. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, <laughs> To answer that question, I would say um, 
the boss. I mean, wouldn't you want to be the, the, the big boss? I'm always surprised that, that no one picks Shepard. I just want I just, I just want to run the show, so. Wow, the dish is weird, guess. <laughs> uh, man, I don't know. I don't know how, who I would pick. Um, who? How's your Scottish accent? <laughs> abysmal. Absolutely abysmal. But hey, sure, I'll take that on. Here you go. Yeah, have fun. <laughs> Give me something to say with the Scottish accent. Come on, throw me something. Let me see if I can do it. Uh, how is that a rapist bug retrovirus? I don't even know what you're saying. I don't even know what you're saying. How is it? The rapist bug the retrovirus. Retrovirus. Retro no, I sound Russian. She's a... <laughs> Terrible. All right. Well, anyway, Tori. <laughs> My go-to has always been Jason, just because it's fun. Yeah, yeah. Not not a lot of words and a lot of running around. Fun. So, you get to fight, yeah, you get, get to kick, and, kick, kick people and, and run. Yeah. I want to yeah. kick and run, kick and, they, and run. And they go to the pub later. <laughs> yeah, hilarious. He would say to me at the beginning of days sometimes, hey, Rich, how many lines do you have? <laughs> I'd be like, I got like two sentences. He'd be like, I got two words. So, it's true. Yeah. It's true. He had nothing. <laughs> yeah, except for so, that one so, time Rachel had one word. Oh, come on. <laughs> We had a scene in an episode called Poison. Poisoning the Well. And there's a long shot when Beckett comes through and we're, oh, the whole crew's coming through a tunnel, right? And the, yes. and the, the cameraman Grizz is going backwards through this tunnel. Sweating. And we have to go into this village or into this lab. We end up coming out. And I'm saying how I don't, this is like, you know, I don't want to, I, I, it's actually unnatural going through the Stargate. I, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm a doctor, not a fighter pilot, whatever. I come through and, and I, make, I make a reference to uh, McCoy, I think, for Star Trek. And, and uh, Rachel. I had one word. I had one word in the whole scene, and it was who. Who. <laughs> and, they, and because it was such a long, it was like basically from starting from the very top of the balcony all the way down here backwards with us going through, and there's all camera issues, and the poor guy's sweating like crazy. We get the lines out, and he keeps on bumping to the wall, so we have to start over again, and we got one perfect, and it's all done, everything works out, and then and he's okay, moving on. Rachel's like, ah. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I, I, I forgot my line. <laughs> um, and I was like, Rachel, and she's like, what? I go, you don't have a line. You have a word, you have three letters, it's who. It was important, so, it was important. <laughs> it's like a punchline to the joke. Anyway, yeah. So we have to go back and do it again. Thank you. <laughs> no, you look fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> I think you're up. Uh, my question is, um, in the last episode of Stargate Atlantis, we see Todd and John Shepard, and we don't know what happened with Todd. That's my question to you all. Oh, with Todd. Yes, I Todd. I <laughs> loved Todd. Todd, Todd moved to Germany. <laughs> Hi, Todd. But it seems like you shrunk. <laughs> Todd learned to speak German like and he shrunk to Munich. <laughs> in our country, we call that Halloween. Yes. <laughs> I'm the young Todd. Young Todd. I like Son it. of Todd. Like it. it looks yeah. good. Todd was a good guy. What do you think happened to Todd? Told you. He learned German, he went to Munich. <laughs> you! Yes! Oh, I guess, um, I uh, hope he had, as a, uh, I know what happened with Todd. Uh, I don't know, don't know. But I, if I can say what, hap uh, what happened, yeah. uh, I... Security, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Sorry, I had the hope um, he find a way to don't eat. Uh, yes, to not uh, eat anybody. Yeah, but don't, right. Life in a good way. Uh -huh. with, uh, other ways. ways. Fabulous. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hello. So, uh, 
sort of question for both of you. Um, if you had, could have convinced the writers to change the storyline or add a character development during the series, which one would you choose? Um, I'm going to jump in quick. This is actually came up yesterday too. It's a thing I say a lot. Um, I really wish that they had explored a bit more of the relationship between Taylor and Weir. I wish that they had given those women some com some time to to learn from each other. To I, I think that the, yeah. that Weir would have said, "I want you to teach me so I can defend myself, so these other people don't have. To, I'm not a liability at Atlantis anymore." And I think Taylor would have been interested about just just that conversation, the dipl diplomacy. Yeah. And I think it's a shame because that's a big argument, like women talk about a lot in our business. How often are you in a scene with another woman that you don't talk about a man? Um, and it's a shame that we didn't have a lot of that on the show, even though the writers and producers did write some very strong female characters, but there was never, I mean, my character, I was always having to fight to be heard. You know, I had to fight to be a leader and, and um, wasn't offered a lot of natural respect from the people, like there is that, that constant sort of battle. So I think that's a missed opportunity. That would be a lovely opportunity. Yeah, I agree. And the whole idea of the diplomacy, right? The character was the diplomat, that that would have been happening. I would have wished that there would have been, one thing that was attractive to me when, when, when it first started out was the whole internationalism of it, right? That there is all these different nations that are that are there that are, that are working together. And I thought that was kind of glossed over. That was just sort of a patch on your shoulder, whatever the flag was whoever it happened to be, but those stories about what it's like to be from different places to work together in space would have been more interesting. So that, that's what I would have liked to have seen. That's funny though, because I wonder about that. We talked about that yesterday too, so. <laughs> good, good answer. But anyways, no, not good answer. <laughs> yeah, let's have a dialogue. I mean, because yesterday what I thought, I always say, I would love for there to be a daytime visitation from people from another planet because all of a sudden we would all stop saying, well, I'm German, I'm American, I'm gay, I'm, you know what I mean? Like we, we are always divisive. We we're all share this planet, we're all the same tribe. And when we went out there to explore other planets, we're going as Earthlings, not as Czech Republic people or Scottish or Welsh or Canadian. We're going out there as Earthlings to share our experience and our planet and our knowledge. So I think it was sort of, I think, yeah, to, to not have that division, but to have that. That was my take on it. Yeah, cool. I guess I'm up. Um, when I first auditioned for Taylor, there was a scene um, that I loved, and it went into great detail about her dad and um, her people. Uh, in a way that was never really explored um, in the actual season, um, at the, in the actual series. And that's something that I always would have loved to have explored a little deeper. Um, I also love the intera interaction rather between Taylor and, and Michael. I, am, I had a lot of fun doing that and I think it would have been fun to have a little bit more of it. Connor's great to train here. Do you guys know who he is? Yeah, great. Star Trek, amazing. Um, I think there's a one of, one, one of the things I would have made take back maybe was a line in, in an episode called Sunday about an exploding tumor. Um, oh maybe get rid of that part, that wouldn't be good. Yeah. I don't know. But it did cause a lot of drama, and then it was able to come back thanks to the lovely fans here. So, but uh, no, I you know, I, I, I agree with everything these guys have said because their relationship should be filled out a bit more and there's a possibility to have that. And I like the idea of what David's talking about too, having like just maybe getting uh, to know the people a little bit more about the humanity of the characters and where they, how they grew up, their, their histories, each character's history, like uh, Tori's family, you know what I mean? David's family, Taylor's you know, tribe that she came from, we don't want to understand where they came from, they're more about her people, you know? And then, you know, for Julia, every, everybody, I think they could have developed all of our characters a little bit more as far as their personal issues went and where they came from a little bit. Fill it up, fill it out a bit more, but maybe that comes with time, which we ran out of. Right, right, exactly. Sorry, Joe. But I was also going to say, yeah, that there was a lot of interaction, as Tori said, that was missed between many characters. Yeah. Like you know, we only got a few, and it was always so great, but there was so much more. And you're yeah, right, we Tori. We really had scenes too. Yeah, yeah, yeah clearly. So yeah, had we continued, I think that there would have been so much more possibility for you guys to get to know us 
through our getting to know each other in a way that we didn't really get to explore. So anyway, yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll echo that because my, my favorite scripts were always the ones that were about the characters where you got to see them interact and talk about their lives and talk about their upbringing. And we didn't get a ton of that, right? Because it's this dangerous world and we're constantly going to battle and we're fighting these alien races who want to kill us all the time. And power, always like ZPMs and getting power. We getting power. obsessed <laughs> yeah. with powering Atlantis. That was like every episode, power, power, power. Yeah, so it was nice when we got to just sort of be still and speak to each other like human beings and relate that way. Good question. Thank you. Spotlight. I know. There he is, up there. Hello. Hi. Um, so I, uh, so uh, Paul, you, you're on uh, uh, Hallmark Films and yeah, I'm up here. <laughs> um, and, and I will promise I'll bring this back to Atlantic. But on Hallmark is a show called When Falls the Heart. And it is, uh, among other people, produced and directed by Prince Peter Deloise and uh, uh, Martin Woods. And they have a doctor character on there called Dr. Carson Shepard. <laughs> <laughs> and he's currently engaged because it's Hallmark. Uh, she's currently engaged to a nurse, and her last name is Carter. So we're very happy that uh, you know Carson is is alive on that show. <laughs> um, so you and uh, Terrell Horothy were, uh, uh, do films on Hallmark, and that's lovely to watch. Uh, both your characters got killed off in the shows. Sorry if that's a spoiler for uh, people who don't watch Stargate, but. You know, both both doctors got killed off in uh, in Stargate, and we do know the story behind why they wanted to uh, do a, a dramatic death for Janet Fraser. But can you tell us a little bit more about why they wanted to do a death for Carson? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think it summarizes like, why do you think that it was you asked about why they chose to kill off the doctors? Is that sort of the well, question? Especially, yeah, especially for for Paul's character, for Dr. Carson. Oh, well, I, no. I mean, you know, as far as I know, they want, they, they said, and I said to you guys, they want to make a dramatic change in the series and get a reaction from the fan base. Um, that they do that. Sometimes they do that in shows to do those things. And, you know, we as the actors are the last to find out. And when we do, you know, it was uh, a sad departure, uh, surprising for everybody, but um, it's certainly surprising to me. But uh, at the same time, um, it was always nice to come back too. So, you know, it was always nice to come back and see uh, all the castmates that we work with and, and uh, get a chance to revisit the show. And, and I think the fans were very happy about that. We came back and it was nice. I think, yeah, it was a good show that. that, um, you know, Jewel came in and basically replaced uh, Beckett, but at the same time, uh, Keller and Beckett, when, when we did have scenes together, it was a nice relationship too, because, you know, we come in, he's a bit of an older doctor and, and she was new and we had that relationship going as well, which was kind of fun too, and I think that was really neat, a way to do it as well. But uh, it was nice to come back and, uh, you know, but to answer your question, yeah, shocking to leave at the same time. I think everybody was shocked by it, so. You know, these things happen. It's a TV show, so you, you do the best you can, and uh, and uh, if you get the call to come back, maybe you can do it if you're available, you know? So it was good. Yeah, it was very shocking for the for the viewers, because we had absolutely no idea that it was gonna go in that direction. And can you just tell them next time not to do that? <laughs> you will. Thank I will you. let them know, thank you. <laughs> it really was like killing a puppy. <laughs> so sad. Beckett, for God's sakes. Yeah. Don't about Carson. Thank you. <laughs> Who's got another question? Up on the balcony. Oh. Hello. 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 My question is for Rachel. Hi. Um, you mentioned yesterday that you were born and raised in Tanzania. 
um, before moving to Canada for the first um, five years. So um, my question would be, um, is the culture um, still part of your life in terms of, let's say, folklore, poems, um, holiday rituals, or it just um, tales told by the fire, by your mother or the grandmother? Um, right, so yeah, I was born in Tanzania and I moved when I was six. Um, and all of my mom's family live in Tanzania. She's the only one who left. Um, and yeah, I've been back. My, so my mom was raised um, Christian. So there were no necessarily um, Tanzanian um, holidays, etc., that were passed down. But my mom is Tanzanian, so of course I am a, a product of where she comes from. And we were raised in, you know, whatever those traditions are. And she is, you know, she embodies that. So uh, to answer your question, yeah, um, so much of who I am is influenced by my Tanzanian background, for sure. And I have to say that so much of who Taylor was was influenced by that. I really drew quite deeply from where my mom was raised and how she grew up. She comes from a very, very small village called Mlalo in the Usambara Mountains of Tanzania. And uh, she was raised in a village that had no electricity. Um, everybody was very, very close. My grandmother was prescient. Um, there were no telephones and she could predict things <laughs> and people would come and ask her about and she was always very very on it so there was an aspect of my grandmother that I imbued Taylor with as well um, yeah I mean I don't I think it's like you know like Paul and like Tori and, <laughs> and like David and, you know I mean we are all influenced by our backgrounds in a very very deep way so yeah thank you so much Hello. My question to each of you is, if there would be karaoke at Atlantis, which song would you choose for your character? And maybe who should they do it with? <laughs> karaoke at Atlantis. Man. Oh. Listen, What's I, your avoid, I avoid karaoke even now. I, even though I'm a singer, I don't like karaoke. So I don't know. I'm going to pass it to someone. You're too good for karaoke, is that what you're saying? <laughs> Jewel, Jewel you, do, you do karaoke, don't you? I love karaoke. You do? So do oh I. My God, I love it. <laughs> well, Beck, it's easy. Beck would just sing the Proclaimers, you know, 500 miles, you know. Right. Least, uh, <laughs> okay. okay, I'm thinking of a Czech band now called MiG-21, and they're a really good rocket band, so that's probably what I'd be singing. Nobody here knows them. Anyone from Czech here? There we go. It's not that make matzah dieta. Leo Tanchin. Can't wait for that, Tori. All that came to my mind was Patti Smith pissing in the river. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not appropriate, but it came to my mind. Whatever. It's karaoke. <laughs> Joel. I feel like. I feel like Keller, you know, she's in this in this world where she's always struggling to be taken seriously, but she's she's young and uh, you know, I don't forget that part. Um, so I feel like she would, you know, especially after a couple of drinks, she likes her beer. So she'd have a couple of beers and bust out the spice girls. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Just to surprise you even further, you know. Many levels of and layers of Jen. Yeah. Um, all right. I think that I would choose Girls Just Want to Have Fun for Taylor. <laughs> that I would love to see. You know, you know, she didn't get to have that much fun, but I think she had a fun side in her. Why don't you crank out that song from the episode that I like so much? <laughs> all right. Okay. So are we going to tell the story? Sure, tell <laughs> Um, uh, you all were so delightful on my panel and you asked me to sing the song and, and, and a lot of you very much enjoyed it and I appreciate that. 
someone over here did not enjoy it um, and was part of the, you know, the, the funeral procession, which was meant to be a very, very um, deep and emotional scene and was for me. <laughs> but whenever, okay, so this is what happened. You, you record the music in advance and then I had to lip sync it on stage. So, and we had a lot of extras who were Athosians and they were standing beside bongo drums. <laughs> always there and as soon as the background began and it was like D -d 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 I would see Paul doing what he's doing now which is kind of like <laughs> I couldn't help it I couldn't stop laughing you, you turned I, it into cough sometimes it's just like <laughs> I had the giggles and I could not you know when you can't stop laughing I don't know why and she made me move a few times in the I scene I had to make a move out of my eye line it was terrible and then sometimes you're just kind of standing like this and all I saw was <laughs> I, was, I was pretending I was crying, but I was like this. I was like, <laughs> and she'd stop the song halfway. She'd go, Paul, stop it! I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I was like, oh my god, it's so bad. I felt so bad, but I couldn't no, stop. No, you laughing. didn't. You didn't feel badly. <laughs> All right, not that bad, but it, 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 it was funny. I mean, oh my god. So when you watch the scene, you're now going to have a different take on it. It was sheer comedy. If you see me duck bow my head, you'll know why. <laughs> uh, before I forget, because I have here, um, these uh, lovely castmates, we have, um, I mentioned that there, I have the return part one and two that I'm gonna raffle off for charity later, um, towards the end. Uh, and it's uh, the call sheet, and it's signed by every one of us here on stage uh, for you guys. So we'll, do, we'll get a monitor up here, and we, they can do that, and we'll have a little auction. And uh, it's got a great cast on this one. It's Joe Flanagan, Richard Dean Anderson, Tori Higginson. It's a huge episode for Tori, uh, called The Real World, um, which we have the script of The Real World here. And that's signed by everybody up on stage, too. This is my personal script. Um, that as well, and plus um, the call sheet for a dog's breakfast. Um, that's signed by everybody here, and uh, Rachel was also in the movie. Unfortunately, she wasn't in this day, but uh, we had some fun stuff to do in that movie as well. So that's David, myself, and Kate on that one. So we'll auction those three things off later on for you guys if you're interested. Okay? Sure. Let's, Let's take another question, shall we? Hello. Oh, hi. Hello. My question is uh, for David, but for the rest of the cast as well. I would like, because I'm from Czech Republic. Dobrý den. Dobrý den. And I would like to know if the rest of the cast knows about your secret messages that you managed to sneak in in Czech and what's, what's their reaction to them? Can I say I just discovered this last weekend when I was in Czech Republic? <laughs> and it was a fabulous discovery to make. And it was hilarious arriving in Prague where I've never been before, being treated like I was Daniel Craig or like I was David Nichol, whom is their Daniel Craig. They love you so much there. It is beautiful and yes. puzzling. Uh, <laughs> so, absolutely so, beautiful. So, so it's absolutely so beautiful. beautiful. But I didn't know that. I didn't know that either. So it was it was really funny to find out and have all these people come up and talk. And did you know that he said this? And did you know that he? I'm like, I didn't know that. But he was. Yeah, you guys, you're taking the piss out of us all the time. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Teaching the world to swear in Czech, one episode at a time. Well, it's honestly, it's the writer's fault because they wrote in swears in Czech. And guess what? I know how to swear in Czech. <laughs> so uh, I let loose. Uh, a lot of it was aimed at uh, Hewlett. A lot of my invective was uh, was aimed squarely at him. Ale Ježíši Maria, já s těma hercema nemůžu pracovat. Exactly. <laughs> uh, at one point, that one made it in, and that was, I cannot work with these actors anymore. <laughs> and it turns out that I can. I can. I love them all dearly. But yeah, that was a great example of breaking the fourth wall. And when I went to one of the conventions in, in, in uh, Prague, 
And one of the fans just came up to me and says, why would Zeneca say that? Why would he say he can't work with actors? They're not actors. <laughs> See what we're doing here? We're breaking the fourth wall. Yeah, so a few of those little nuggets, and it's great because they had no idea, the producers had no idea what I was doing. In Letters for Pegasus, in that one episode, uh, that was a, this one, Mario Azzopardi. Remember Mario? Of course. That was boring. Do it again. So uh, we do. A, we're supposed to do. A, it's called a bottle show where they just reuse different epis, uh, different things from different episodes, and they really liked the effect of the city breaking through the water. And so in Letters for Pegasus, they did that thing again. But the rule of filmmaking is don't describe what's happening on on on. So I had a monologue where it was beautiful, and the city broke through the water, and the and we rose up, and all of that. But they asked me to translate it and to do it in Czech. And so, and Mario, it was the first thing, first thing in the morning, six o'clock in the morning, camera set up, and he says, well, let's do the Czech version first. And I was like, oh, okay. So I, I do it, I do my little letter to Pegasus, which was, I think it was like a video message or something yeah, yeah. that we had to do, yeah. And I did it, and I re recorded it in Czech. And I took a deep breath, and I was expecting that, well, we'll do the English version. But he said, okay, good, right, thanks, move on. And they never, he never took an English version, so it forced the editors to use the Czech. So now that's what is in the episode, is the city is rising and me describing it in, uh, in, in Czech. Yeah. So that's how, that's, how, that's how we get those things in there. <laughs> Good question. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are you guys aware, I don't think it happens anymore, but about 15, 20 years ago, there's a lot of shows we shot in Canada, the States, and they had very strict nudity laws. So we'd shoot that, and if the show was then airing in Europe, they would say, and now for the German version. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, that was said, and which at what point, as a woman, you're told to take your top off. What? <laughs> I think it has now changed, but thank you guys, and also, yeah, you guys for that. <laughs> and now for the German version. Now for the German version. They asked me that, they asked me to do that quite a bit now. Now, Paul, take your shirt off for the German version. <laughs> Don't you send. Hello. Hello. Uh, this is a question for all of you who have children. Um, do they watch Stargate Atlantis? What do, you, do they think of it and of your work on the show? <laughs> My dog loves it. Next. <laughs> uh, honestly, um, I have seen when they were younger, they did, but I no, no, haven't seen it. Haven't, haven't seen it. My kids are unimpressed. <laughs> totally and thoroughly unimpressed. I mean, on occasion, we'd kind of be scrolling through Netflix when Netflix had it, and, and we'd scroll past Stargate Atlantis, and I would say, that's the show, and they'd be like, mm-hmm. <laughs> Or, or we would happen to stumble upon an episode by chance, and you know they'd sit for five minutes, and then they'd slowly get up and leave the room. <laughs> so, they're just not. Yeah, I don't know. They're just yeah. Yeah, I have the moment. Arrow episodes. How many Arrow episodes on? What's in the fridge? What's in the fridge? <laughs> uh, love the flag on your shoulder, by the way. Lovely. Thank you very much. Uh, my kids are a little young for it. I think it's a little scary, especially having looked at Todd over there, the Wraith, you know? Uh, but maybe soon they'll watch it. I don't know. Like, you never know what they're going to grab onto, you know? Um, we'll see what happens. And, but not yet. No. I have an almost six-year-old, so I think it's a little too intense for him, too. But um, I'm doing a law show right now, and we were having people over to our house to watch an episode of it on Friday night. Um, and Wilder and I were going for a walk, and he's into spelling right now. He's learning how to spell in grade one. So a lot of the time he'd say, Mama, let's practice our spelling. So we're on our walk, and he goes, Mama, let's do some spelling. I said, okay. Hey, do you have any interest in watching Mama's S-H-O-W? And he goes, N-O. <laughs> <laughs> Because no. we're in the house all the time, and you don't want to watch, watch yeah. TV, you don't want to watch your parents. Yeah. Then Jules says, you're a little S-H-I-T. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 
I don't take it personally, it's okay. Wait till he's a teenager, then he'll start taking it personally. Hello, who, 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 who's next? You guys, who's got a next question? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. question is about the video sequences in the, um, in the first season uh, where Atlantis nearly get destroyed and my question is um, when you're as an actor had a connection to your character how does it feel to um, recording the last words of these characters well Atl Atlantis was getting destroyed kind of every week <laughs> you know, there was there was peril around every corner. So, I, um, I I think that you know we were aware as characters of the danger that we were in, and we were prepared with technology that would protect us, like shields, and laser beams, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, it, it is. Peril is there all the time, so I, I mean, I don't think we were ever sort of shocked by it, or I don't think anyone. Hmm? Hmm? Um, do you mean how is it as an as an actor to yes. say the last yes. words for your for your character, knowing that yes. your character you might be saying goodbye to them for the last time? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, the real end, not just the fake end. Oh, okay. I mean, you know, I, I will say, you know, our last episode, you know, that it's, it's always, I will say it's always very emotional as an actor to say goodbye to a character, especially one that you've gotten to know so well. So, yeah, it's, it's always, it's always a little sad. No? It was... For me, I had already went through that. Oh, that's right. You'd already grieved yourself. Back and then show it, and I'm like, all right, see you later. <laughs> you know, Tori, how do you, you, you had this similar sort of situation in some ways, right? Not really, because I had the same thing. Like, I didn't, I was, I came back for a little bit in season three, and, and then, or in season four, and then when they said, so I didn't realize at the end of season four, those would be the last words I'd say is we are, when they asked me back for season five, and I had said no to come back to that. So yeah, I, I did, you don't really have the weight. I think it'd be, it'd be different if you were on the show every day and you know this is your last episode and you know this se I mean, very rarely do you end a season knowing if that is the end of the show. Because usually we're hoping for an extra season or, and, and seasons get um, canceled between shooting times, not when you're actually shooting. I think it would be very, probably, yeah, very emotional and very moving to if you were all on it together. Like the shows that do, like SG-1 did that, they knew that was their last episode. So that's a very different weight. And um, I, I haven't had that experience myself, so I'm not sure. I imagine it would be very hard. I imagine it would be similar to like when you do a play in the last, the closing night of a play. And it's always very funny because directors always say, oh, you guys were so crappy tonight because you were so indulgent. You wanted to hold every word and then you're no longer serving the story because you're holding on to your emotional connection to the character, which makes you a bad actor. Bad actor. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hello everybody, nice to meet you. Um, I have one question to Mr. McGillan. Um, for the first time I looked stuck at Atlantis, my favorite character was Dr. Beckett. And my question is, what uh, is your emotion or what you think um, that your role is Dr. Beckett? I'm married. Let's see what's happening here. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, I love the character. It was a fun character to play, you know. Um, I think I mentioned in my talk the other day that, you know, he wasn't Scottish initially, so my mom and dad have very thick Scottish accents, so I felt they wanted initially me to play a British, an English accent, but I felt when I read the pilot, he was, seemed uh, to have a Scottish sensibility, so I kind of went with that. So it really kept it close to my heart a little bit, you know, and I know David feels the same way with the Czech. You know, he brought in that character and a little personal background of your, of your family into the role. So, I mean, that, that was special for me to be able to play that and bring, you, bring a Scottish sensibility to the character. 
I think it was fun because he got to do quite a bit of comedy and also quite a bit of drama. So as an actor, it, that's always fun to be able to play both parts like that. So it was a, it was a fun character to play, and he got to do lots of great stuff. You know, like the show itself was like playing cops and robbers in space. You know, it, it's like every episode you go through, you know, a different gate to a different world. Why, that's why the franchise is so successful because you never know where you're going. You know, and it's escapism, which we need a lot of in these these. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi there. Hi. Um, the second best part of the episode uh, Sunday was that it kind of looked into everyone's hobbies or the characters' hobbies on Atlantis. It was a day off, so uh, Beckett wanted to go fishing. Mr. Venka was playing chess and watching anime and things like that. Um, but if you had a day off on Atlantis, if you were there, what would you be doing personally on that day off, having that time to yourself? Well, that, that, you reminded me of the, the, the chess playing. I, I love actually playing chess myself. I played online with my, my buddies. And that day, they brought in a grandmaster to show me how to, you know, and I was like, oh, I can't play chess. So I spent the whole day before shooting my scene playing with him. And he was showing me a whole bunch of different openings and stuff like that. So it was actually really cool. It was like a consultant that they brought in. They thought, you know, he would set up the boards. And so it's like, oh, no, I could meet you there. I could do So that was kind of cool. I think we would be in the distillery. Um, distillery, <laughs> tuning the hooch into a shampoo. I'd be right there with you. <laughs> you, took, you took my answer. <laughs> I guess Taylor would probably choose to go strolling by herself, I think, someplace beautiful, without any kind of threat around her. I don't know, that's kind of like... That's what you do on your day off. That's what you do on your day off, right? I, I think Becca would have a karaoke machine in his quarters. Oh, you, know, just her you know what I'm saying? <laughs> just let this happen. Uh, I think Jen would be, you know, have her feet up somewhere binge watching a TV show while Rodney just talks through the show in her ear. You know? I feel like he'd be that guy. <laughs> he's Stop talking. Kind of My show is on. Yeah. Um, we have ten, ten minutes left. Should I do for auction up a few things right now? Or are we wait? Thanks for your A couple much. more questions first? Yeah. Do you guys want more finish us with questions? Do you want us to do an auction? What do you guys want? There's people standing up for questions. We don't want to shut you down. No, well, yeah, whatever, yeah. We'll take questions, then we'll do the auction. Yeah. Let's answer them. Let's, let's, uh... Hello. Okay, Bye. Right. My question is if there's a new series of Stargate, which would be your favorite enemy and Eddie, or would you create your own one? I think the Wraiths were pretty good. But, yeah, I, I like the Wraiths. I think they were a really good, spooky reggae vampire kind of. Yeah, I agree. I thought it was one of the scariest creatures <laughs> out there. You know, when I, and when they were dressed, like when you got there on set, they, they were frightening looking. And that's why I haven't let my kid watch the show. I find them really scary, even as a person. You know, well, when you're there, actors, they, they, they couldn't they, eat lunch. <laughs> yeah, they did an amazing job with them. You know, the, the Mas Todd Masters, you know, it was just amazing what the, his whole team could create. But that was an, a, an excellent villain in the show. So I, as much as I wouldn't like them to be there, I think they'd, that, they'd be great. I would bring Michael back. Yeah. I love Michael too. Michael was my favorite. Yeah. yeah. Michael. And Connor's such a brilliant actor. Yeah. yeah. Connor's fantastic. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I want to know, is there, um, the Stargate Atlantis series has been released on Blu-ray. Are there any chances that the original Stargate series that has been not released on Blu-ray, only on DVD? Uh, You're asking the wrong people. <laughs> <laughs> We're just the hired help. We have no idea how they build the house. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, like where I have no, you guys usually know more than we do as far as when new series are coming out, when it's coming out in a new format. So feel free to DM us if you get the answer to that question. Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay, the next one here. Here we go. One more? No. Two of 
Boom. Hello. Hello. Um, short question. How do you approach different uh, roles? Tori uh, told us yesterday between Weir and uh, the character in Dark Matter, especially uh, David, uh, the difference between uh, the character in Atlantis and the Russian mob boss in Arrow, because they were so different from each other. I think as any actor and all of us, I think, uh, it, I mean, it's all the same kind of preparation. The, the, the approach to it is, is whatever your, 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 your technique is. For me, is I, I, I try to get the text first, try to find the character. It's, it's lives, not lines. Uh, getting, getting behind who that person is and using your imagination in terms of that person is. And then usually I, for, help for learning lines, for walking or exercising, just so it gets into the body, so you're not sitting and learning, so that it actually goes through you and you actually have a body attached to the head that's talking. So that's kind of important for me as, a, yeah, as an actor with the physical uh, part of it. And just that's sort of the imbuing part of it. You, you take the work on and you, you assume who this person is and you just, you just go with it. And thank you. For that. Thank you. I would like to know how it was to, for you to play a character with so many changes. First, um, as Oliver's friend, then being his enemy, and then being his friend again. Same thing. Uh, it was just the approach to it. Uh, I mean, uh, Stephen was a great actor to, to work with, and I was lucky enough to have several episodes to, 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 to work on that. You, we work with the, the texts that we're given. We're as good as the, the, the writing that comes comes to you. So I think as the character develops, particularly that they don't know that this character is going to recur, and once it does, they get to know you, they see what you can do, and it becomes kind of reciprocal. We'll give you the chance to, to do that. So we just go through all the different phases and do it. It was lots of fun. Okay, uh, thank you very much. I really like your character. Thank you very much. <laughs> what is the best for you, or what's the uh, mostly like thing what you have in Stargate Atlantis for all of you? Uh, the best part of Stargate Atlantis for me was working with this cast. I mean, honest to goodness, we were very, very fortunate to get a group of people we all genuinely liked. You know, and that doesn't happen often. So that to me was was the best part about the whole thing. I, I think I don't. I, for me, I think the the best part has been going to the cons together. To be honest. Yeah. <laughs> oh really? I mean, the, the show was wonderful, but because of that show, we we're we're traveling the world together, right? And that's amazing. <laughs> that we get to do that and you know we're out to dinner last night at this beautiful restaurant in germany you know it just feels like you just kind of sometimes feel like the luckiest person it's pretty cool yeah. it's great we get to travel all over the world it's a gift that keeps on giving it's because of you guys that we'd be able, able to do this come to all these different countries and venues and see new people and everyone's happy to see us it's a very nice feeling so that's the biggest thing we got to show i think you know i they're saying if we want to do an auction we're going to auction off a few things right now let's do it let's do so, it let's do it um and if you want something, um, this gentleman is, will uh, put your hand up or yell it's loud because it's hard to see from here. And uh, we'll just auction these off. It won't take a few minutes if um, you guys don't mind. And this one will do um, a dog's breakfast first. It's the call sheet from a dog's breakfast, David Yield's movie. So if you're interested in this, we can start this off at, uh, at 50 euros. 50 euros for a dog's breakfast. We got 50 right there. Thank you. Uh, do we have uh, 60? We have 60, do we have 70? Okay, do we have 80? No, I'll help David. Do we have 80? Do we have 80? Yeah, we have 80. Do we have 90? I'll do it in a Scottish accent. We have 90. Do we have 100? We have 100. Where? I don't know. Over there, I think. Do we have 100? Right there? 90. We have 90. Do we have 100? 90 going once. 100 over there? We have 100 there. Okay. Do we have 110? 110. 110, thank you, nice and loud. Do we have 120? 
We have 120, we have 130. We have 120. We have 120 going once. Going twice. We got 130. Okay, we have 140. We have 30, 130 going once. Going twice. Sold. Very good. Very good. <laughs> And we'll come up and bring it, bring it away to the gentlemen later on, and they're all signed by Alphans. It's all. The next one, there's two items. This is the call sheet from the return when I came back after I was died. And, uh, and it's signed by everybody. It's got Richard Dean Anderson on here, and Jason Momoa, and everybody, David, to hold that. Let's start this one up at 100 euros for that one, okay? Do I hear 100 for it? Okay, do I have 110? Wow. 100. Going once. 110. 110. Do I have 120? 120. Do I have 130? 130. Do I have 140? 130. 130. 140. Do I have 150? We have 150. Do I have 160? We have 150. Going once. We have 160. Very sexy. Do I have 170? We have 160 going once, going twice. 170. Do we have 180? Come on. We have 180. Thank you. Do we have 190? We have 190? We have 180 going once. We have 190. Do we have 200? We have 200. Let's hear a little round of applause for that. Thank you. We have 210. We have 200 going once. 210, oh, do we have 220? 210 going once. We have 220, we have 220. Do we have 230? We have 230, do we have 240? I'm getting turned on, this is crazy. Do we have 240? For the babies. 230 going once, going twice. Sold for 230. Very nice. Tori, Tori will tell you a little bit about the script, the real world. Gosh, yeah, the real world, yes, I was crazy, I wasn't crazy, <laughs> there's replicators involved, oh, RDA, oh, <laughs> Richard it was fabulous. <laughs> there's coffee stains from my coffee cup on this, okay? We're gonna coffee start- Coffee stains from Paul McGillian! Yes. <laughs> Oh my God. Sorry, up here. We'll start this off at 200 for the script for the real world. Richard Edis Anderson as well as in this, and the lovely Tori Higginson is a huge part in this, and all of these casts are in here. Starting 200 for the script. We have 200. Do we have 220? We have 200. Do we have 220? We have 220. Do we have 230? 230. Do we have 240? 250, very nice. Do we have 260? 250 is where? Right there. Do we have 260? We have 250 going once. We have 260 right there. Very sexy. Do we have 270? Do we have 270? We have 260 going once. We have 270. Oh, do we have 280? We have 270. Do we have 280? We have 280? 280. Do we have 290? We have 290. Do we have 300? We have 300 right there. We have three, do we have 310? Do we have 310? We have 300 going once. Going twice. We got it? We have 310. Where? Straight ahead. Straight ahead. 310. Oh, very nice. We have 310. Do we have 320? We have 320. Do we have 330? We have 320 going once. Going twice. Well, we have 330. We have 330 there. Do we have 340? Do we have 340? We have 330 going once. 340 up there, up top. Do we have 350? We have 350 there. Now we're talking. Do we have 360? Do we have 360? We have. 350 going once. We have 360 up there. 
We have 360. Do we have 370? We have 360 up top, going once. Going twice. Oh, we have it. We have 380. We have 380. Do we have 390? We have 380 going once. Well, we have 390. We have 390. Do we have 400? And this, half of this script goes to Dirk's uh, charity for FedCon here, for Sea Shepherds as well. So we have 390, yes. Do we have 400? We have 400, we have 400. Do we have 410? We have 400 going once. We have 410. Do we have 420? We have 410 going once. Twice. We have 420. We have, we have 420 right there. Congratulations! You guys are amazing. You got 420, right? We have 440. Oh, 440. Where's 440? We got 430. Do we have 440? We have 440. Do we have 450? We have 440 going once. 440 going twice. We have 450. We have 450 right there. Do we have 460? We have 4. We have 450. We have 460. We we have 450 going once. 450 going twice. We have 460. We have 460. Do we have 470? We have 460 going once. Going twice. We have four. We have 470. Do we have 480? We have 470 going once, going twice. 480. Congratulations. Thank you so much. That was amazing. Uh, do you guys want to say something? For that up? was that was so exciting. I'm sweating. <laughs> that was exciting. Jack me up. You guys are amazing. I hear this continually too. That the Stargate fans, how much money you guys have raised for charity over the years? It is extraordinary, just extraordinary. And sea thank Shepherd you. is fantastic. Yeah, extraordinary. Thank you guys. We'll see you at the closing thank ceremonies. You so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you.